Welcome to whatever this is. So today we're going to put together the livestock scale. Uh, we took a look at this thing. This is extremely heavy. Here, I'll just, I'll just point the camera down here. We, uh, we took a look at this thing on a live stream a while back. This was actually on the Amazon wish list. So thank you to the person that bought this. I know it's been a couple of months or more, but we got this thing kind of wired up pre pre um, uh, something words. We wired it up just to test it and make sure it works. We got four load cells. We've got some feet. We have this PDF that was included in the box that seems like it's been through a shredder. And then we have the main control box. I just smashed into a bunch of stuff that plugs in with what looks like cereal, but it's totally not. The plan for today is we're gonna get this thing put together, which means I have to build a platform, which means I have to figure out how large I want it. And then we're gonna have to go, I think we're gonna buy some lumber. I, uh, I think it's gonna be the easiest way for me to do this thing, just build it out of two by fours. But basically you just, put together a platform, you put these little load cells underneath and you space them up with these little shim. Okay, we cleaned some files off the SD card. Anyways, we need a tape measure and we gotta figure out how big we want this platform to be. The idea with all this, in case I haven't mentioned it already, which I probably haven't, or have, I don't know, we're gonna weigh power chairs because I feel like there's a lot of discrepancy between what the manufacturer says the chair weighs and what it actually is in the real world. And I don't know, I just feel like it's one of those metrics that should be handy to have. So I think we're going to build this out of four foot two by fours because you can buy them pre-cut and they're inexpensive-ish. So two feet is not wide enough. I'm just measuring the width of my chair here. I think I wanna do like, let's see, three feet. A three foot by four foot platform. I mean, there's three feet. It seems kind of large. It seems kind of large, but at the same time, hang on. <clears throat> it seems kind of large, but at the same time, I want to make sure any chair will fit on it. Wait, what is the widest chair I have? Uh, probably the bounder with my giant tires on here. Let's see, that thing is 28 inches. Oh, you know what? Let's do 32 inches wide. That seems like a nice number, and there's a little box. There's a little box around it already on this tape measure. Uh, this thing scares me. Then we're gonna need to get some bolts to attach these load cells to the bottom of things. And these are approximately one and a quarter, wait, is that quarter? Yeah, one and a quarter inches thick. And then I'll need to go through a two by four which is not two inches these days, but according to my maths, probably three and a half inch bolts should do nicely. Oh, and we need to figure out what size these are. Luckily in all my screwing around for getting the bolt and rail sizing chart set up on the website, which by the way, that's on the website now, brokenwheelchairs.com if you wanna know the bolt sizes for these mounting rails on chairs and stuff like that. But I went to a hardware store and bought hardware and made myself a sizing kit. So the idea with this is I'm not going to actually use this hardware in projects, but it allows me from one quarter up to half inch and M5 up to M12, a sample of every bolt so that we know what size we're looking at. Now this is 7 sixteenths. I get the feeling this might be sort of close, looks a little small. Let's do half, ooh, half inch bolts fit. Okay, half inch bolts it is. Well worth the $90 I spent on assembling this kit. <laughs> Dude, it was insane. So I go into the hardware store and I bought this, well, I just picked this box up and I brought a retractable Sharpie with me and I went over to the hardware section with it and started writing on the inside of this box what all the different sizes were. And it took me probably, 45 minutes to go through and pick out everything and write it down. Cause that particular store, you just have to manually write out the item. Well, the quantity and the price. Anyways, whatever. The cashier was, it took him 10 minutes to ring me up, but 
I think what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna write down a couple of things so I know what we're talking about. Then we're gonna go to one of the usual scumbags. I think the blue big, big box store may be one of the closest ones to here. So yeah, let's go buy some stuff. So I was sitting around trying to figure out the best way to build a platform. And then I realized thrift stores exist. Harbor Freight exists. There's all kinds of stuff. We're gonna go in here and see if we can find a kitchen table or something made of wood or a large flat surface for cheap that we can just cut up with a saw or use as is. Um, this is a super junky thrift store and they usually have lots of cheap furniture. So let's go see what we can find. We have boards now. Well, that thrift store, well, they had some furniture. It was gonna be a lot of work to try and buy something and move it and whatever. So just ended up going to the, uh, to that one place that sells stuff and now we have lumber. All right, I think I have purchased enough stuff to make this work. I got some pre-cut four foot boards, which I did pay a little bit extra for these. The eight footers were $3.99 each and these were $2.99 each. So I, there's a concept I like to call annoyance factor. Now they do cut lumber and I could buy those larger ones, but then I have to find someone in the store and get them to like rip them in half. And then they notoriously don't really do that with correct measurements. So then I'd have to cut them again anyways. And it just turns into this whole thing. So I paid basically a dollar extra per board or however math works, but we've got six of them here. I think this should be enough. I recall, you probably can't see it, but way back there in the corner is a big old piece of carpeted plywood that was from the very back seats on the bus. So we're gonna use that for the platform. So this uh, frame doesn't need to be like super rigid. Well, I'm just gonna get these things cut and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here's our platform. Um, it seems a little bit larger than maybe it needs to be. I think it might be an optical conclusion though, because we're 32 inches wide, and that's gonna give us plenty of width for almost any power chair. Four feet long though seems like that might be excessive, but then at the same time, it's not really that insane. So that tape measures at the back of the chair and four feet comes to right here. So I hate that thing. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and keep building it. It's big, but um, yeah, well, we can always make it smaller. Uh, apparently we're gonna need to pre-drill these crappy boards. I, uh, yeah, I don't know, whatever. Uh, let's see here. It's probably good enough for government work. And it's still cracked. <laughs> oh man. I'm going to get the rest of this put together and then I'll come back and show you what the plan is. But basically we're going to put the load cells underneath down here and have these lower boards kind of protecting things. But anyways, um, BRB. I keep doing all this stuff that's a lot of work. Okay, we have our platform scabbed in. Basically, we're just gonna throw plywood over the top of it. Got some carpeted stuff back there that just needs to be cut down. And I'm not too concerned about the weight on this because I think there's like a minimum of 20 pounds or something like that for the controller to work correctly. So the idea is we're going to attach our load cells under here. That way there's a little bit of a kicker here to kind of give them protection. And they're tall enough that they will lift this up a little bit. 
and kind of be hiding back here. So that's kind of the idea. I think at this point, um, dragging my feet around, I think at this point, I'm gonna get these things all unwired from the control box where we were testing them and then work on getting the holes drilled for these bolts because he's gonna go, he's gonna go through there basically and attach or something. Okay, they've all been released from their rising clamp terminal prison. Now basically these things bolt underneath here and there's a little shim that you put on top of this and then this section here with this notch on out will flex and the load cells down in here. So we're going to basically attach these things down here. As you can see, there's plenty of room for that to go in there. And then there's these little feet that screw on here and you can screw those anyways. And then essentially it's going to go under there, something like that. I think that's in frame. Yeah, so this basically allows us to get, keep this thing as low to the floor as possible, doing it this way. So what we're going to do right now is use these things as a drill template. And factoring in the amount for that foot, this looks like a good spot right here. Harbor Freight smorgasbord. I'm assuming there's a half inch in here. Oh, there it is, biggest one. Oh, look at that. It fits perfectly in there. I really hope this is a frame. It's hard to tell how that camera's set up, but this isn't like super critical. I just want to make sure these feet aren't going to interfere with these bars here. So we'll just kind of eyeball it right about there. And then... That should do. There we go, and start the second one. I am noticing after drilling these, those are two very large bolts in a piece of wood. I guess the only load is gonna be kind of centering this thing though, and this will be like some sort of giant weird washer on the bottom side, but... Yeah, ordinarily I wouldn't want to make two giant holes like that this close together in a crappy 2x4, but anyways, I guess I'll get the job done. Alright, I'm going to go around and drill the rest of these, vacuum up our mess, got the, the free mold bar and vacuum there, and yeah, then I'll be back. Okay, we've got all of the holes drilled. Now, the way the assembly works on these things, you have this notch here, and that's the top. They have an arrow here that's also supposed to point down towards the ground. So basically these are going to sit on here like this, but this part here needs to flex just a tiny bit. So that's what these little metal plates are for. So we stick these in here, then we put our bolts down through. And as you can see, this middle plate, this metal plate here gives a little bit of room so that this can flex. Now this whole thing is lumber, so yeah, reasons, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how this works. If you notice here, we do have a bit of a gap. And once these are tightened down, that little gap there should be enough flexation, supposedly, for this thing to be able to extrapolate the bend of that and convert it into a weight reading. Anyways, once that's on here, these feet screw in then use that lock nut to tighten them down and this is what the entire thing will be sitting on. So I'm gonna go around and get the rest of these installed and then we'll have to figure out wiring too. Oh, I was gonna bring some wiring clips, I forgot. Eh, oh well, there's always later. Okay, and since this is lumber, we will have to tighten these down again. I did get some 7 16 washers. The half inch ones were huge. 
but I was only able to stack one of them on the back side. As you can see, they overlap. So on the back here, on the farthest side of each one of these, I've got at least one washer. Is that a crack? No, I think that's just a scratch. Why is this one so short? Anyways, um, I think at this point, we're ready to work on the plywood top for this thing. Now we've got this thing, which is left over from the bus. This is back where the kitchen and fridge are currently, and this was on the back wall, and some of the seats leaned up against it. Now it's uh, not the thickest plywood in the world, and it has this sort of a little frame on the back of it here. I think it's held together. Oh no, they used Phillips. There's a lot of flathead screws all over the place, but, um, oh, did they, are these glued in? Ah, uh, these are glued on here. Okay, we'll have to knock those off. But this is 30 inches wide. It's not quite as wide as that is, but it should be enough to, um, I'm trying to one hand this tape measure. It should be enough to cover the platform and be okay. Yeah, so it's 30 inches. So that means we've got, uh, let's cut an inch on, we have an inch on each side. Um, we are probably going to have to notch for these bolts because yeah, these stick up a little ways, but that's not too big a deal. So, so that thing is going to go on here, same width. It's already carpeted, which is great. So it's only going to come to maybe about here on each side, but I think we should be, should be good to go. And then we've got a few scraps left over here that we can use to brace up this front end here. Because as you drive chairs onto this, the tires are going to be coming through here and here. And that plywood is just thin enough that um, we need some more support right here. Actually, also, what I'm going to do with the offcut on this is turn it into a ramp. And I've got a piano hinge right here. And we're basically gonna use this and the cutoff from that to make a little ramp so we can drive chairs up onto the thing. I'm not sure how cutting a carpeted piece of wood is going to work, but I think we should be okay. It's pretty, pretty well glued on here. All right, well, I'm gonna get this bracketry taken off the back of this thing. Actually, right, we'll just let gravity do its thing here. There we go. I'm gonna get that bracketry taken off and yeah, continue on. Ah, I think they glued the whole thing in here. Oh, they use staples. Or a little like, uh, yeah, they stapled it, you got it, stapled it on there. Interesting. Okay, that seems very well attached. Uh, yep, there's definitely screws. Okay, what I decided to do here was just use a utility knife and cut a little slot in this carpet. That way we can look down there and see where the screws are. Yep, they also used brad nails. But this way we can get the screws out and then we can glue the carpet back down when we're done. And there we go. Yeah, I was kind of not wanting to screw up the carpet, but we can just glue that back down. All right, I'm gonna do the rest of them. Okay, the uh, Ryobi saw seemed to cut through that just fine. It uh, The carpet did load it down pretty good. This might be a little bit too short of a piece to use as a ramp, um, but yeah, we'll see. Let me get this vacuumed up, and then I think we're ready to put that on here. So this is 48 inches long. I cut this at 45 inches. That way it'll leave us a little bit of room here to mount our piano hinge or ramp or whatever we decide to do on there. I'm gonna cut up that piece to fill in these gaps and yeah, should be a thing. Time for a break. Look, it's a thing. Got the top carpeted piece put on there. As you can see, it's a little bit smaller than the rest of it, 
but I think this is going to work nicely. I, uh, <laughs> I forgot to bring, well, actually, I thought about bringing my tool bag that has the universal oscillating cutoff tool and a sawzall and stuff, but I didn't. So I had to kind of knock out these little cutouts around the bolts with the skill saw, a utility knife, and a hammer. As you can see, there's there's a little bit of chisel cleanup work that I need to do, but uh, yeah, it's all together. It's screwed on. There's probably about 30 screws attaching that to the entire frame. And now, I think it's probably time to work on some of the wiring because it's kind of just flopping around under there. And uh, here, let's see if we can tip this up. I need to get the output filter for that vacuum. Every time I turn it on, it just sends a huge cloud of dust into the warehouse. It has the internal filter, but I think there's a bunch of dirt or something uh, caught in the actual blower part of it. So let's see here. Okay, there you can see we were just we we're just sitting on these bolts and the measuring part of the load cells are still isolated here with that little gap. Uh, a little bit of glue or something there. Let's see if we can clean this up. Okay, there we go. I didn't even think about it, but I should have grabbed my little um, little wiring clips that I have so I could actually run this wire. Then we've got the control box, which is... Hmm. which is this guy right here. I think we're gonna mount, I think we're gonna mount this underneath there somewhere. And then we'll have the one wire that goes up to our controller or readout or whatever. Actually, I think uh, other than the ramp, which I think we determined that piece is a little bit too short. Well, actually, you know what? I could probably, well, we'll figure that out. Um, right now though, I need to get the wiring tied up under here because it's just flying all over the place. I'm glad I forced myself to do this. This will be a handy thing to have in stock. Now, granted, there is not a lot of space in here. I I need to get some more racks set up to get some of the crates and stuff off the floor. But yeah. Um, anyways, I'm gonna take a break real quick and then we will pick this back up. Fast forward some amount of time, I had to make another trip to the big box store. Grab some plywood and another hinge and some screws and some little wire clips. And right now I'm working on getting the junction box wired up. And I think I've got everything all connected in here. Just gonna go around and tie down all these cables. I was able to cut off quite a bit and we'll be able to use that to extend this part that's going to go to the controller. But for right now, I think I'm going to get this mounted, get the cover back on it, and clean up the rest of our wires. So yeah, we're making progress here. Okay, after a serious amount of screwing around and trying to figure out this manual, it didn't make a lot of sense. I watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos and finally found one in English, and it explained how to set this thing up. Turns out you have to put weight on it at one point of the calibration to set it. If you notice right now, it's hovering between zero and not. Uh, I think that's just because of reasons. But if we push down on this, you can see our numbers start going up. It seems to work. And all the load cells are functional. Now that we at least know the wiring is good and everything, I'm going to flip this thing back up and kind of button up the rest of the wiring. I'm gonna work on building the little ramp so we can actually get a chair onto this. Now. I just sat on the thing and used that as a calibration. I don't know actually what I weigh. So there's a very good chance that the calibration may be, you know, 20 to 50 pounds off. <laughs> but I at least want to get a power chair on this thing and uh, see if we can get that part to work. It is oh, almost 8 p.m. right now. Really, at this point, I could say we're good, but I want to I want to end this video with a chair on this platform. By the way, once again, not sure if the calibration is correct, but we took the load off all the load cells and it's showing about 43 pounds. So the 20 pound minimum, I think this thing definitely meets it. <laughs> well, wouldn't you know, we're already at version 1.5. I started editing the video, then I realized two things. One, the ramp with the piano hinges was a horrible idea and I wanted to have a separate freestanding ramp. But two, when I tested this thing, the camera angle was such that you couldn't see anything. So we fixed both of those things now. 
Hmm, I just realized something though. With that ramp on there, the way that is, I can't stand this thing up in the corner. Huh. Um, so on this side, there was only one screw left. The other five, the heads broke off. See? <laughs> we now have a freestanding ramp, and we've got the controller over here, or the readout or whatever. I put the end of the cable on there, so that's good to go now. Let's power this thing up. And it should zero out. Yeah, that's minus the weight of that old folding ramp. So, okay, we got that zeroed now. So instead of that piano hinge that was on here, I just modified this. And it looks kind of funky, but this basically supports the thin plywood and keeps this piece from flexing, blah, 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 whatever. So we can just get this really close here. The other thing with the ramp being attached to the edge before was all the weight was being supported and cantilevered and it made the front of this thing flip up, which we don't want this thing flipping up and the load cells banging against the ground. That's really bad for them. So let's give this a test. I've got some little shims under this front leading edge and also the ramp's not cantilevered anymore. So it may tip up a tiny bit, but not very much, hopefully. Okay, yeah, that's, that's acceptable. We'll be able to fix that later though. Okay, and we are now completely on this thing. According to the scale, we're about 657 pounds. Now again, our calibration is not correct on that. That could be, well, it's kind of an exponential factor. So that could be anywhere from 20 to 75 pounds off. But what I'm gonna do is get some dumbbells and actually do the calibration process on this correctly so it will work. But yeah, as you can see, we are on the scale and we have a little freestanding ramp back there. Actually, I'm kind of glad I made this a little bit wider because we've got room for the caster wheels to turn around and there's plenty of space on this side as well. So yeah, I think this is, uh, I think this should be a decent setup. I'm gonna have to put some little adjustable feet underneath this thing though, because I kind of forgot about the concept of having these feet set back a ways. Any sort of weight that's on here is going to make this whole thing try to flip up. For right now, I just had a piece of plywood and a board underneath here. So we're gonna have to do something there. Obviously this can't touch because it will affect the weight reading but I don't know, that's a problem for future me. We've at least got the thing built now and it functions and yeah, we can weigh power chairs. We'll have to go back around and fix a few little things, but the hard part is now done. And because we don't have, because we don't have the folding ramp on there now, we can turn this off and unplug our connector. And then we can just grab the whole thing, stand it up and lean the thing up against the wall out of the way. Well, once again, thank you to the person that bought this from the Amazon wish list, and I'm glad we were finally able to get it set up. This is something that I've wanted to use for power chair reviews for a while, and just other videos and stuff, because being able to weigh chairs and batteries and other things are, I think, really good information that is otherwise not really attainable. So anyhow, hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in two days on the live stream. Let's assuming I get this edited and uploaded tonight. It's currently 11 p.m. now, so anywho, I'll see you then. There was one casualty today, however. This shoe has finally, after eight years, decided to give up the ghost.